welcome to another episode of Talking Bollocks with me, your host, Howard H. Smith. It's good to be here, and it's great to have you here. I am lead singer with UK thrash band Acid Rain. Um, I do this here podcast. I do the official Motorhead podcast, the Motorcast. I do another podcast with uh, a couple of uh, friends of mine called Dave, both called Dave, and that's called The Reducer. Um, I'll put a link in the uh, uh, in the description of the podcast for you. Also, there'll be a link saying support the podcast or podcast Patreon. Click that link, takes you to Patreon, sign up, $6 a month, and you get a shared load of extras. You get this podcast early, you get to ask questions of guests, uh, you get a live podcast, you get a radio show, you get classic album uh, episodes, there's all, all sorts of bits and pieces. Anyway, there you go, click the link. Phew, I think that's pretty, m- is that everything? Oh course and i'm a stand-up comedian which is funnily enough what i've done most of my life um way more than music but here i find myself on a music podcast and here you are to listen to said podcast so shall we crack on yes we shall um first up is um some uh, trolling um uh, trolling of everybody who goes to music festivals who is 35 or over um yeah where am i going this well this is a tweet that caught my eye um from daniel schofield and daniel schofield's twitter handle is at danny um that's with a lowercase d at danny scoff so that's s-c-h-o-f 81 the digit eight and one daniel schofield danny scoff 81 People over the age of 35, and that's pushing it, attending music festivals, don't, don't realise they're ruining the, the, why, the vibe and weirding everyone out. You might think you're living your best life, but you're actually living your most embarrassing life. Try a real ale festival instead. So, um, I mean, uh, I'm a pretty opinionated guy, and I've said some dumb things over the years, but, uh, I mean, that is... Yeah, I mean, uh, blatant trolling, an attempt, a deliberate attempt to um, uh, to just, you know, get everyone riled up. I don't know. Why, in fact, why don't I put a link to, uh, why don't I put a link to, to Danny's Twitter in the description of this podcast? And um, you can tweet him and ask him yourself. I mean, the issue I've got with it is, I mean, there's so much, isn't there? There's so much to pick apart here. But let's just, the, the, the thing that made me laugh is that, well... People in most of the bands you're watching are 35 or over, you fucking nugget. Hey, I mean, what are you talking about? It's it's just fucking hilarious. And and clearly there is, you know, somebody of 35 or over has done this man wrong or, 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 you know, what's going on? Is, are you okay? Is everything all right at home, son? (laughs) I don't know. Anyway, look, that's enough... um, that's enough giving time to that. Um, should we say knobhead? I think we'll say knobhead. Yes, definitely. OK, um, so let's get straight into the news. Um, that's where we're going, in case you're wondering. I hadn't said, had I? Right. OK, well, that's what I mean by let's crack on. So it's into the news. And first up, headline on blah, blah, mouth is this, the heavy metal version of Spice Girls introducing Venus 5. So um, it's five singers. Italy's Gre- Italy's Greta Lakova, um, uh, and, sh- and she's another Frontiers recording artist because this comes from Frontiers Music SRL. This inverted commas band. Um, she's another Frontiers artist. Slovenia's Kaman Klink, Serbia's Jelena Mil- Milanovic, Sweden's Tezi Pearson, also of Infinite Divide, another Frontiers recording artist, and Albania's Irina Sitilari. Each vocalist is an outstanding singer in her own right, so the combination of the five together produces stunning results. Born from the idea dreamed up by Stefano Perugino, Frontier's president and head of A&R. I mean, that's a dangerous combination if you're president and head. I mean, you basically you own the label. Yeah. Venus 5 is primed to be one of the most fresh and exciting new mu- mu- uh, musical prospects to emerge from a European rock and metal scene in recent years. Assembling the vocalists and musicians required to be a tremendous amount of time and energy is the right the talent had to be put in. Blah, 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 blah. Right? Of course, many people will see five women instantly make references to uh, this being a metal version of pop projects. Uh, hence, <laughs> blabbermouth trolling it with the headline. 
heavy metal version of the Spice Girls. But please make no mistake, the vocal talents of the singers and music is front and centre. Musically, the songs are a team effort by producer. Yeah, and then lists. So basically, it's not a band. It's li- This has literally been put together. Um, a bit like baby metal, if you like, because that's how baby metal was put together. And it's just been put together to basically make metal, hard rock, symphonic bollocks. I'll link you to the page if you want to listen to it. All I can say is it sounds exactly like you think it will. Yep. Yeah. Just from just from that, just from that uh, press release, yeah, it sounds exactly how you think it will. Anyway, going to the other end of the scale, Papa Roach is Jacoby Shaddix on decision to release new album through band's own label. It's going really great for us. Now, I would say, was it your decision, Jacoby? Was it your decision, or did somebody get dropped? Well, let's have a look. Um, so it's released, blah, 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 yeah. Honestly, we've learned a lot. We've been, we've been surrounded with a lot of great people in the music business. Yeah, yada, 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 yeah. Um, so the truth is, I, I mean, I, I have read through this and there is no, um, uh, uh, there is no sort of reference to them being dropped. But, um, I, look, I'm just amazed that Papa Roach is still going, to be honest. I mean, I genuinely thought it was... <laughs> I thought that was going to be it. Um, But no. So I'm kind of, I don't know, you know, never liked the band, never wanted to give them any credit, but I have given old Jacoby in the past and and they're still going. So there's got to be a reason for that. Got to be a reason for that. Moving on, Jason Newstead didn't get Metallica Saint Anger. When I first heard it, I said, I, I heard it. I went, what the fuck are they doing? Yep. Not just you, Jason. Not just you. Um, I heard, um, I heard the one where they made the video uh, in the prison. Title track, Saint Anger. I heard one song with my dad while we were riding in a car in Michigan because the radio is still pretty uh, wed to Metallica. And it went on for fucking ever. It was like eight minutes on the radio. And I went, what the fuck are they doing? No disrespect, but I didn't get it. It was maybe harking back to uh, longer songs and aggression and tempo. And that stuff takes a lot of energy in Angler. Anger. 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 Bloody hell. That stuff takes a lot of energy to play. And with James going up and down the fretboard like that, no one can touch it. I have a lot of respect for that thing, but I'm quite a distance away from that type of music now. I still like my heavy songs, but I sing for real now. I play the bass, um, place, uh, play the bass upright, sing those back and back. Well, right, okay, yeah, fair enough. You know? But, um, <laughs> oh, he goes on to say... I still, I, still, I, I still love Sepultura and stuff, but it really isn't the way I used to be. I'd be happy to join them to do some stuff if they wanted me to. I still talk to Lars a fair bit, and I send him my stuff, and he's always super supportive. I really appreciate it. Isn't that nice? Oh, they're all still friends again. Isn't that lovely? Not really news, is it? But there you go. Slow day in blabbermouth land. Next up, original Tiger Tail singer Stevie James to perform an entire Young and Crazy album at One Off London concert. Um... I mean, I mention it purely because, you know, Tiger Tales, it's the 80s, isn't it? And, you know, good good on you, Stevie. Why not? Um, next up, can't believe this is still going. Motorhead guitarist defends Lemmy against Nazi sympathiser accusations. I mean, fucking hell. It's, it's, it's been a while now since um, anyone threw these around. But, you know, really? Really, I think we all pretty much know he isn't. And I'm not just saying this because I was the motorcast. I mean, it, it's pretty well documented that he just like you know, he was he was a fan, he was a historian, he was a war nut. So and clearly the German stuff was a lot harder to get hold of than the British stuff if you're British. So yeah. Anyhow, let's give it no more oxygen. Corey Taylor playing Alice in Chains Wood with Jerry Cantell was probably the highlight of my life. Um, and the reason I, um, I picked this story was just that I thought that was a really, a really cool thing to say because it, fair play to the man, you know, I, I, I kind of know where he's coming from. The music that inspires you to be in a band and you can play your own music and it's incredibly rewarding. But there's something about... The music that inspired you and playing that, 
you know, like playing covers sometimes, that you just you get a completely different buzz because you're your fan turned performer. It's like this that's the song, you know, I, I listened to this song when I and now I'm actually on stage performing it. There's a buzz there that's completely different to playing your own stuff. So um yeah, I, I kind of read that and, and I thought people are gonna think that's clickbait, but I I'm I'm gonna stick up for Curry on that one and that's a really good point. So um uh, I wouldn't say that, you know, highlight my life or anything, but uh, do it, you know, doing a cover. But there you go. Well, certainly, hey, if I was on stage with a band cover with with that band covering it, then yeah, maybe. Anyway, um, yeah, do you know what? I was going to read a story on Joe, on Manowar. They've changed drummer, big deal. And and to be fair, the, the PR release isn't as hilarious as usual. Hilariously over the top. It's just brilliant. Uh, next up, Die Humane. Featuring former Exodus guitarist Rick Hunolt and ex typo negative drummer Sal Abrusco. Well, um, Abruscato. Now, Sal is an awesome drummer. He also played in Life of Agony. Great, great, great drummer. So, um, uh, oh, you know, he played in Carnivore. Yeah. Um, j- just a great drummer. So I'll be really interested to see how that comes. Um, they're, um, I mean, you know, album's finished. And yet, here we go. Oh, and here we go. Uh, the 11 song effort, which will include an as yet undisclosed 10 minute cover, is currently being mixed by Ulrich Wilde. Well, there you go. So uh, there you go. Just talking about covers. Boom. 10 minute cover. I genuinely didn't know that was coming. And yes, that is that's, that's because I am disorganized and I, don't, I never know how this is going to go. Um, uh, next up is final story in the news section. And heavy metal loving cartoon characters Beavis and Butthead to return in dumbest sci-fi movie ever made. And um oh that takes me back to the nineties and the eighties and the the, the, the all tees really. Um because that is just absolute class that they are making a return. It is just superb that Beavis and Butthead are gonna be in a new movie. There's there's just something about that that's like, yeah, yeah, I'm cool with that. Yeah, you know, it kind of works. It kind of works. And and speaking of working, because um, he's always working. Yeah, it's my old mate, Gene Simmons. Yeah, the man who looks like a... Who's these days in real life looks like a badly drawn toy gorilla. Um, here he is, Kiss Basis Gene. And, and, and the, the headline of this one is, We raised the level of what a fan can expect on that stage for their hard-earned money. Uh, speaking about the end of the world tour, uh, it's end of the world, end of the road farewell tour. It's been coming for a few years now, and I, I can wax poetic and prolific about all kinds of things underneath this veneer. In this sort of, it's got to end sometime. You want to respect the fans enough to know when uh, to get off that stage, and it's going to be sad, and it's going to be happy. Sad that you have to leave something that you love so much, but really proud of and for. Look what we did. We raised the level of what a fan can expect to stay on stage with their hard earned money. There's no question about that. So if you see wrestling and there's pyro. Uh, um, or Sir Paul McCartney, one of my heroes, anybody that's putting stuff in their shows. I mean, I mean, where do you think they got that from? Mungo Jerry. Right. OK, so no one ever used pyro before Kiss. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. So if you see wrestling and there's pyro or Paul McCartney and they're putting that stuff in their shows, where do you think they got it from? Brilliant. So he's basically saying that he influenced... Um, Paul McCartney, who's one of his heroes, and wrestling um, because they had pyro at their shows. I mean, this is just classic fucking Gene. It's like, I agree with a lot of what he says there, you know, and and without a doubt. Yeah, I do think, you know, you all the way through there, he's got a fairly sane, cogent point. And then right at the end, he just has to gene it up. And the the ego just can't fucking stop poking out like a fucking bone poking through the skin and you know it's it's just he's got to throw he's got to throw some Paul McCartney and um uh, wrestling into it as well yeah you know if yeah if we had where do you think they saw that eh? where do you think they nicked that from it's us isn't it no it fucking isn't honestly that is just such fucking bollocks just 
pyro in shows. Jesus Christ, they were doing it in they were doing it in Victorian times and fucking sideshows and carnivals traveling from town to town for fuck's sake. Where do you think you got the idea from, Gene, you fucking plagiarizing cunt? For fuck's sake. Honestly. Last month Gene told Spin about Kiss's uh, post kiss plans. Well, um, we have the Rock Inspired Restaurant, Rock and Brews, which is becoming more successful, and quite a few other businesses, which is no relation to sticking my tongue out. And at, that, and, and at some point, after the band stops touring, I may go out with the Gene Simmons Band. Oh, I'll do as a favour, don't. Did about, uh, did about 50 shows. It's a lot of fun. Totally different experience. I, I like being in the Ramones or U2. Or, it's like being in the Ramones or U2 or something. You put, you put on sneakers and T-shirt and that's all the work. So your heart doesn't have to go boom, boom, boom. Like it's going to thump out of your chest like a kiss show. If you're a blues artist, you could do that until you're in your mid-80s. The way B.B. King did at 88. Are you kidding me? Me walking around on stage, dragon boots and all that, even past 75, I can't imagine it. The physical wear and tear, your heart just is not going to be able to take it. Well, keep doing it then. I defy these guys off my head to get into my outfit. Oh, good old Gene, eh? Yeah, and that that also, I mean, he's got a point about, you know, getting old, but that's about fucking it really, isn't it? Um, and that's why you're not going to see, you know, Slayer come back or anything like that, because you, you can't just make a return to playing that kind of music, having not played it for fuck knows how long. Um, and, um, yeah, well, if so, if, you know, good on you. If you've seen Gene stumble around a fucking arena stadium stage near you recently, um, do let me know what you thought. Um, I am on all social media. Uh, well, you know, uh, the real ones, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, hit me up on there. Uh, there's also a Talking Bollocks YouTube channel where there will be there will be um, this interview if you want to, if you want to listen to it on YouTube. I don't know. I don't know why you would. We didn't do a video of it, so I don't know why you'd do that. But anyway, I'm now going to introduce today's interview. It's Chris Dale. That's right, kids. You already knew that. You've seen it in the description. But it is Chris Dale again. Yes, he's back on the podcast. Chris, who played bass with the Bruce Dickinson band for a while, um, mainly on the Skunk, Skunk Works album, and uh, was also a part of the band that played in Sarajevo during the war, hence the movie Scream For Me, um, Sarajevo. If you haven't seen it, make sure you see it. It is absolutely superb. Brilliant, brilliant movie. Make sure you get to see that. Anywho, um, we got together. Chris has uh, tales to tell. He's also got a book out. So what, what better reason could we have to meet up in a local pub and have a few beers outside? Well... Not particularly nice weather, but we're skulking about. There's a bit of background noise. Um, there's some people jabbering away, but the the, the quality of the actual um, audio is good. So don't be dissuaded by the people in the background. There are merely some poor unfortunate knobheads in the background. This is Chris and I having a chat not long ago. We are in a um, a pub garden, sort of under a lean-to kind of thing. <laughs> but we've got some heat, because um, it's been pissing down all day. Um, and I'm here with Chris. And the first thing you said to me was, we should do this more often. <laughs> God, it's been too long. You say that every time. Yeah. I think we had a good excuse this time. There was a lockdown, wasn't there? That is a, that's a great that's a great excuse. It's, it's yeah. an excuse that I'll be using for years to come. Uh, well, in fact, it's not an excuse, is it? It's fact. Yeah, it's a reason. But I'll be using it for years. To come. Uh, yeah. It won't be fact then. Yeah, no, no, no. I, well, I, I, I've actually, yeah. I mean, I've lost count of the amount of people who don't realise <laughs> how lazy they are because so many people just use COVID as an excuse. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like. Just oh no, COVID. No, yeah, no, I can't. Do, sorry, no, I can't have COVID. Yeah. It's an easy. Can you take this steak yeah. back? Why like, can't eat it? Why like, COVID? Yeah. yeah. Can you go to the shops? No, COVID. <laughs> it's just fucking. Yeah. It's gonna wear out soon. Yeah. I won't be able to use it much longer. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep going for all this work. I don't blame you. I don't blame you. Now, one of the reasons for us getting together was um, 
well, which means it's a June second. <laughs> should we get together? Yeah. Um, but I mean, star of stage and screen, and now <laughs> published author. And the thing oh, is, yeah. the thing is, mate, you may laugh, right? But that is you. <laughs> that is it sounds true. funny when someone says it back to you, right? <laughs> Star of um, stage and screen. I and now also, yeah, I know. Oh, don't worry, screen. don't worry. Yeah. I researched this bullshit. I'm going to spurt out. You know, <laughs> but uh, it's literally all I do. But um, yeah, it, I, so I noticed. You know, I couldn't help but notice that the you know the book came out. Yeah. Um, and it seems to be doing rather well. It's you you were in the you were in the Amazon rock book charts and yeah, it went to number one and number three. Because the softback went in at number one, oh. and the hardback went in at number three. Boom! At number two was the BBC Proms. Right. Okay. So I think when you're beating the BBC Proms, That's, you're, you're doing all right. Well, you are. Although I do wonder if they're right in the right category. Uh, possibly. No, it was in uh, it was in music, history, and criticism. It was the actual chart that it went in on. Right. Okay. Um, but I think the thing is, you know, it, it, I, I think the book's quite good. You know, and you had a little look and said you enjoyed it, but. Yeah. Really, I'm selling to Maiden fans. It's a kind of yeah, oh, you know, I'm well, fan, well, but fans and fans of Bruce in general. Absolutely. And, oh, sorry, no, you're right. Yeah, you Maiden know, fans. Like, I, yeah. There's a market there. It's not like I've written some genius off the top of my head, um, a, a fiction, and it's went to number one. That would be yeah. amazing. Yeah, but I'm writing for for the fans, and also the fans help write the book. I don't know. Well, how much you know about it? Yeah. Well, I look, I, and this is this is genuinely no mm. joke. If if you were, I don't take this the wrong way, if you were a real guest. <laughs> but, you know, I, I do my homework, I do my research, but because, 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 we because we're mates. Because we around the corner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyway. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I thought, no, wrong approach. Like, you know, don't be, don't, let's just have a chat. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And that's what we're here for. Anyway. Well, also, the fact that also, it, also it felt a bit weird because I went, I went to Google you and was like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a bit silly when it's mates. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like you know, it's like ego surfing, which is the uh, phrase for googling your yeah, own yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's just like no, there's things that you don't do. You don't google what, what, your like, names, I'm watching do you? you on stage at Bloodstock jumping around, and of course there's a part of me going, oh, what Nelson Band? And part of me going, that's my mate down the pub, yeah. and it brings everything down to normal yeah. level, doesn't How, it? Howard looks happy. <laughs> you yourself, Seth, to this. Bless him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, yeah, I started a Facebook group just before lockdown, right? About the Skunk Works band that I was in with Bruce back in the day, yeah. And it was really to reconnect with old fans and friends and yeah. share a couple of stories, and that. right? And it went better than I thought. Yeah. Well, that, that was really, that's what I was going to say. Did you just like call it, you know, Skunk Works fan group, whatever, Skunk and stuck Works. it on Facebook? Yeah. And lo and behold, Inv- invited a few people that I knew. Right. Okay. Um, a few strategic invites. Yeah. yeah that sounds well. sort of a bit of salt the earth, haven't you? And also said, you know, this is specifically talking about scum. We're not rather. talking about everything else. Let's yeah. Stay on topic. And what happened was loads of people came in with funny questions about, like, you know, oh, how did you get Jack and Dino producing your album, or how did you record the B sides, or what happened on tour here and there. And I also started answering stuff because you know there's no big secrets involved. And also got a load of demos and, and rehearsals recorded and all that. And again, there's no big secrets. Mm. Put them up on YouTube. What, yeah, absolutely. What, what yeah. are they doing on my shelf? You yeah. Know? Yeah. Someone's interested in this. And also, I literally have five photo albums, absolutely ran with tons of pictures. Again, it's entertaining for me to look back through, but even more want to for see people, yeah absolutely absolutely people are fascinated be- with behind the scenes yeah, the yeah. stuff we take for granted which funnily enough course, you know yeah. you, you were saying something earlier and I was like save that for the podcast and you were like no oh, it's not very interesting it's like no no no, no, no no yeah yeah but it's like no no but that just that window yeah like is enough but yeah so good for you yeah just get it out there get it out there and share it you know and so what was happening is people were asking me questions I'm answering them copying them all into a word document so the whole book's come out as a Q&A format with me and the fans but not just with me because Jack and Dino got involved producer and Alex Elena the drummer and got Roland Grappoff from Halloween on there and some of the old roadies and crew guys and stuff all, all oh, in their brilliant. memories and stuff so it's not like my autobiography me blabbing I, I think you just I think you just invented a format mate that's it's, fucking it's, gold it works really well I think I might nick that do it 
Yeah, and they're trying to win, you know, and it just comes but across. But also, less work. Well, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> but it also, it comes across as a friendly chat in a pub. It sounds yeah. like there's five yeah. around the table. It's a written podcast. Me and Jackie and Dino <laughs> and you and two fans. And that's brilliant. So how did you, do, what, were you a fan? Did you ever go to Maiden gigs? Did you like Motorhead? And it's all just a big chat like that. Yeah. And it's ended up, like you say, you saw a really thick book pictures on every page and of course the fans are then sending in their photos oh I took this photo of you guys in Hamburg remember that or here's my ticket from the concert of course I got all my backstage passes so filling out pages which is like pictures to really immerse yourself in the stories it's yeah. going along you know yeah absolutely and it's just ended up as a, a whole load of fun and then of course stick it together put it out and yeah did really well that's awesome yeah. and was it self-published yeah that's a brilliant job yeah went brilliant job went straight to Amazon you literally it's that easy you just write a word document save it as PDF upload it they sell it I, I didn't want to be stuck with books around my flat um, I oh didn't, god no I didn't want to go no, to the post no. office every other day oh god no no it's, no no Marla. absolutely you get it yeah, no, it's, it's, they, when, it's like when people say, that. why don't you self-release your album? Because I don't want to fucking um, give half of my flat over yeah. to records to and stock. CDs and spend my life enslaved to the post office. Yeah. I don't actually want to run a record people company. Say, oh, actually, I still get it. You know, people say, have you got uh, those Satric T-shirts in medium? I'm, I'm looking through this old bag of T-shirts. Going, I've got a few smalls. I've got a couple of extra larges. I haven't got any mediums. Oh, could you get some pressed up? Yeah, I want more mediums in my house. That's what really what I want, isn't it? You know? <laughs> and stacks of CDs. And of course, one CD sells out, and you should repress. But the others, I've still got thousands of. What do we do? Yeah. We both live in London flats. Anyone who doesn't live in London is thinking, that's all right, I'll put it in my spare room. Yeah. We don't have spare rooms. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Spare rooms or, or gardens or no. garages or yeah, anything, really. Um, but um, but that's a, that is a great way, though, of for you as well it's like and I'm, I'm, I don't want to get all you know legacy about it but that is actually something that you can and I'm sure already have turn around and give to you some Absolutely. and say um, there you go next time you want to have some me time read um, oh, you know read that I didn't have to I, I try and encourage my son to read as I told you he's at home right now reading Shakespeare's Macbeth yeah <laughs> which I still think I should be calling the uh, child services on you for that I'm child abuse I'm having a point he's, yeah. he's yeah. at home reading Macbeth <laughs> um, but no he's, he's not a keen reader and I do have to force him into come on mate try and read something but the Skunk Works book he took it off me he said have oh, a quick look and within three days he blasted through it all oh that's awesome occasionally coming back with like Dad, did you really set fire to your sound man? <laughs> yeah, we could, yeah, thinking maybe there's a couple of bits in the book you shouldn't read, mate. <laughs> that, is, that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. <laughs> but you know what? I, I think that also, knowing what I was like as a kid, that humanises you to your son in a way that my dad yeah, yeah. was never humanised to me right. it's like do you know what I mean I, I mean I, I, I never heard aspect. tales of my yeah, my, yeah. my dad's crazy nights out or, which I'm sure he had and I'm sure there yeah. was a, with a but you know back in the day that was not something that you you were going to hear about no. you know there was going to be or there was going to be evidence of and maybe once or twice yeah. you'll hear an odd story and maybe it'll be repeated yeah. twice yeah and you'll think oh, and that was my dad. Are you sure? Makes sense. Yeah. And what I really wish, I mean, rock star or all star of stage and screen or whatever, <laughs> we should all be doing autobiographies. Yeah, you know, I just want to. You know. Yeah. Something I, I, I think is like we lose after two generations. We've lost it, haven't we? I know my grandmother. I remember her, but I don't know my great grandmother. And, or anything about her I know what her name was but that's it and once it's gone past those two generations you don't know what your great grandfather did he yeah. did something incredible that you well, just wouldn't hear about it, to be you know? honest I haven't got kids so no they're not going to be wondering there's no one to wonder no but you know <laughs> fans you know and, all, and the, the thing with me with self-publishing as well there's not a load of costs in it like I, I paid the guy who proofread it for me yeah. and I paid a couple of the photographers I think I paid the artwork guy a little bit he didn't want much um, but there wasn't many setup costs yeah and with Amazon print to order you are literally getting royalties from day one you sell one copy and they give you the royalty for one copy that's it 
<laughs> yeah. So you don't actually have to make a profit. So you not, don't yeah, actually yeah. have to sell to a massive. Yeah, family. it's just it's it's, it's, it's a very just family interest. It's a very you know, uh, you, know you wouldn't one well, wouldn't normally associate this with Amazon, but it's a very fair way of operating. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I've got problems with Amazon's business model and some of the things they do. Unfortunately, they're just... Well... Just, and you can't avoid them. But the thing is, as well, I think... That, I, I tell yeah, people to avoid not, Spotify. It's not... Really, it's... it's I know. It's well, not I'm, work, I'm, I'm, it? I'm the same. You I'm know? the same. But um, I've also found that it's quite hard to avoid Spotify. <laughs> you know? Uh, especially when people post their playlists, links, whatever, check yeah. this out. And I'm like, nope. We can't boycott massive organisations, unfortunately, you know. Um, yeah. There's, just, an, there's an element of evil in the world that we, we have. Well, also, I, also, it's like, as I, you know, I found myself in your shoes, it's like, you know, yes, fundamentally, I disagree with many of, Amazon, <laughs> of, many of Amazon's um, uh, practices. However, yes, my book is <laughs> released through Amazon exclusively, through yeah. their self because... Even big, evil, horrible shit has some good bits to it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, for instance, you know, for every rancid filet fish, there is a gorgeous quarter of cheese. <laughs> 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 you know? There we go. I mean, that's one that I managed to avoid. But I mean, even since what? You've avoided McDonald's? Yeah, yeah. What, while being on the road? Yeah. Yeah, I really, really Fucking cool. hell. There's another book. <laughs> Right there. I have once or twice been forced into them. But, but see, I would object to paying UK tax because I can see what our government does with it. Uh, well, Sometimes. But on the other hand, yeah. I also want our hospitals, police service and fire brigade and schools funded. And street lights and rib- like rubbish street picking up. As well. so, I'm going to light street lights on the way home probably tonight. You know, but... Yeah. Um, so... Yeah, no, it's, it's a little bit of evil. Uh, yeah, you know? exactly. But the thing is that, I, you know, I, I, we've now got into a debate about yeah, good sorry. and evil and what, what, I think what we've now what we've determined is there's no such thing as pure evil and, and at that point uh, we slapped each other on the back and congratulated each other uh, I mean so you know we've got, we've got that sorted out that's, that's good yeah. and evil sorted out anything else? Uh, anything, else while we're, uh, anything else while we're here? I'll see you in another six months yeah, yeah absolutely um, yeah so I just went to Croatia oh this yes. is my big thing that I'm still super well, excited we, about. we briefly sort of skip, skipped over this. Mm. So, so take us to your a trip to Croatia. A marvellous coincidence of events. Maiden was starting their world tour there and rehearsing there. Paul Diano, the former singer, was getting medical treatment there. And of course, because of the screen for Miss Sarajevo film in the Balkan areas, I, you know, got got my face around yeah, a, bit. a certain amount of cachet yeah. is attached to your name. So You're a bit of a face, <laughs> yeah. As I say, Dan, Dan in London, you, he's, he's, bit, screen, he's a bit of a face. <laughs> yeah. Star say stage and screen, screen and published <laughs> author, yeah, Christelle. <laughs> no, um, so. So because of that, the whole interest thing, uh, there's mm. this great um, Croatian fan, Stefan Juras, and he put together this fan club event thing, basically. So we had Paul Diano playing one night, Maiden playing the next night, me doing a Q&A for my book, the whole series of events, and tons of Maiden fans, you know, captive audience. That's brilliant. Yeah. So That's I, brilliant. I did a few interviews over there with press, and I did, uh, did my Q&A, sold out of books over there. Wow. Um, went to see Maiden, went to see Paul Diano, hang out with Paul Rhodes. Um, Did you get to see Bruce? No, because of the COVID thing, Maiden went uh, and meet yeah. the Greeks. Yeah, yeah, fair um, enough. Yeah. But, um, I, I, I had the exact same experience with Suzanne Vega. Oh, right. Except I completely forgot about COVID and was like, oh, all right, <laughs> do you want to meet up? And she was like, well, because of COVID. And I was like, <laughs> I and I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the, the guy who did a tour as a four piece three months previously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, how empty fucking headed can you be? <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't get to catch up with Bruce this time, but I did catch up with Paul. And I've known Paul, I think, longer than Bruce, actually over the years just, and I've never been in a band with him it's always just been bumping into him at pub having a drink and having a laugh yeah and I must say I've only ever seen the good fun side to Paul um, he's a good laugh but he obviously has a, an absolute chaotic side to his character and some madness going on yeah um, 
but you know he was really ill a few years ago and he was getting worse yeah. and he was stuck yeah. in a wheelchair and it was all very depressing and these Croatian fans Stefan Juris and his mates got Paul treated in Croatia and now I must say hanging out with him over there he's looking a lot healthier he's looking after himself a little bit he's going to the gym he's got something to look forward to in life you know Yeah. again he's got another yet another chance you know he's a cat of nine lives um so yeah it was great to see him again and also I bumped into loads of Maiden fans I knew and loads of Bosnians I knew and loads of it and it was just bumping into everyone in fact getting on the plane on the way out there first person I saw sat down in first class is Rob Swalwood of course <laughs> fucking hell <laughs> and he's like hello Chris what are you doing here oh no there's more trouble to come isn't it <laughs> thought we fired you in 96 no no I keep coming back <laughs> so that's yeah that's just bizarre yeah, yeah. Uh, just total coincidence. Well, no, because we're all going to Croatia. Well, yes, but all on the exact food. same plane yeah. on the same day at the same yeah, time. I'm checking into my hotel. I, just, I booked a hotel, and it happens to be the same crew, hotel that the Maiden crew are all staying in. Of course, I know some of them, the guitar tech and production. I don't know. What are you doing? Yeah, absolutely. You must have been freaking. You must have been, like, that must have been the standard greeting to you <laughs> for like three days. <laughs> what are you doing here? Well, yeah, we all know what we're doing now. Uh, uh, we're all going to see Maiden. Yeah, but the beauty of it is, is that like, well, Paul's there because he's got, he's got, you know, medical treatment. He's yeah, going to be yeah. doing a show with a band. Yeah. You're there because you're, you know, you're launching a book. Yeah. Um, and the the TV thing as well, which yeah. you've got to talk about. Um, uh, you know, being the judge and stuff. And, yeah, yeah. and then there's Maiden playing as well. Yeah, there's, there's all judge of this stuff. The bands it? as well. That's right. Yeah. Well, yeah. we were there. May as well make most of it. You know. So was it? Was it? Was that just a battle of the bands? Was it on? Was it a TV show? Was no, it, it was a? Just, it was just in a bar. It was just right. In a bar that Paul played in the, the night after, I think. And uh, I'm cheating because I kind of know the background here, but um, for listeners, yeah. Um, you were one of the judges. Yeah, I was. And um, the other judge was. Paul Diano and the other judge was um, Steve Harris's sister Linda Linda lovely yeah I of course not his daughter Linda. she'd be busy gigging somewhere on a bill that yeah is... no doubt um, yeah but I didn't know Linda before and that was really nice to catch up oh right so that um, was a so that was a good hangout as well and, and of course all these people you, you know you know some of Maiden and you've been to some shows and you've got some stories and you start hearing their sides of it and, and hanging out with the fans over the weekend it was just top weekend all around you know yeah yeah good laugh well and also uh, I have experience of this of this um, the weird phenomena where you have a weekend you have two or three days in a bubble mm. of um, of being um, of somewhat a celebrity yeah yeah and 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 then um, and it's and it's wonderful. It's wonderful. And, for and then, the weekend. But but also, but then you come home and I think hey, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna knock it. I'm not gonna say like you come home and you go oh thank God for that. No no. But you come home and you think, oh, yeah. Do you know what I could I could probably do a little bit more of that. I could do a bit more of it. I, I love the fact that you know I can go to Croatia or Bosnia and be yeah yeah reasonably well known for a little bit. Mm. But I can also but for all the right reasons as well. Ealing. And go and do my normal shopping and carry on my normal life, and yeah. nobody knows me except for one bloke in the co op in Hanwell who one day said, Excuse me, I watched a film called Screen for Me Sarajevo last night, but was that you? Because <laughs> my local co op have been there for years. I tell you what, though. So he's the only guy but who. But fair play on him. That. Fair play on him. Because that is some balls, isn't it? Because he must be thinking. No. He, he must be. No, 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 no. And he's watching it. Yeah. Like, Hang on, that's that bloke who comes in our shop, wasn't he? Oh, unless, yeah, so, yeah, 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 maybe, maybe he's like, like, right, okay. It was, it was that way around. Yeah. Right, okay. So that was beautiful. So there's one person in this local area who thinks I'm famous. Apart from that, no, not at all. And, and it's absolutely lovely. And I do think, you know, someone like, you know, Iron Maiden, Bruce or someone... That, they don't have that anonymity. They can't just. Ah. Well, they do to an extent. Well, you I see, mean, I was. T- no, 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 no. You see, I was talking about this. Re- I was talking about this today again. And I was being interviewed today, and I'm. And I said, I think Maiden is the perfect level of fame within music right. because you're in a band that is big enough to basically announce a gig anywhere or yeah, yeah. You can announce a gig in a field, you know, any any country, yeah. any continent. 
going to sell out. Yeah. Right? And you're massively respected. You've sold a shitload of records. You're not wanted for money. And you can walk down the street and, and not get hassled. Yeah. You know? And, and just, just I, I mean, the occasional metaler, the occasional metaler might see you. Yeah. But, but that's, I mean, honestly, it, I, I honestly think it's just, it's, it's what appealed to me. Honestly, ever since I was, ever since I got in a band, what always appealed to me was the, was the, was that it seemed like this ticket to like, like mega fame. Without any of the without any of the drawbacks, no one no one's going through Bruce's bin. You know, there's no there's no paparazzi hiding in his garden. Yeah, you know, well, I, I, you know, yeah, yeah. Every, yeah, everybody's head pops up now. And again, I also but just, just if you did anything embarrassed, like you know, if I happen to drink nine pints tonight, and I don't worry, I'll get from, straight onto Guinness from records on the way home. <laughs> you know, nobody apart from that guy in the co-op is going to bat an eyelid. But if yeah. that was Bruce Dickinson vomiting in the street, it would be over the Sunday papers, or maybe fans would have noticed, or someone would have taken an embarrassing photo or something. That's yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know what you mean. I know, I know what you mean. It's a bad example. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. There's, there's an element of always having to have your guard up. But then again, yeah. don't we all? Does anybody want to be that person? No. Does anybody want to be that person? No, who's no, going to be like, would ignore me if I did it. That's why yeah, I but they think. might ignore you, but they may well. But the same people who would have filmed it and gone, "Oh, look at Bruce oh, Dickinson," yeah. might film you and go, "Look at this fucking sad case Drop puking all over yeah, himself." Yeah. <laughs> and then everyone else goes, "Hang on, hang on a second, that's Chris." <laughs> Okay, yeah, it could happen. You're right, actually. Yeah. <laughs> so, but so basically, we're all in the public eye. We've all, we've all got to watch it. And actually, having said all that, I don't drink any more sensibly in Croatia than I do here. So <laughs> <laughs> quite the opposite. But yeah, I did my. Um, but this that, was one I've done for a while. When was the last time you stumbled home with a kebab in one hand at four in the morning? I think uh, it was about 20 years for me until Croatia last week. Right, OK. Well, no, to be fair, um, yeah, yeah, definitely within the last year. Yeah, you see? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe not with a kebab. And people would have seen that. And I was with Maiden fans who also had a kebab. In my, yeah, OK. Yeah, just... Can we just delete everything I've said? <laughs> <laughs> not at all. People will, people will enjoy finding you on social media and pointing out exactly where you went wrong. <laughs> That's what social media is for, haven't you heard? <laughs> exactly, yeah, quite. Um, but um, that's, um, that's another interesting aspect, though, to it all, you know, to being away and being, and being, having that connection to that life, yeah. you know. But also, you've, you know, you spent many years on the road as a, as a crew member. By the way, yeah. since last we spoke... <laughs> Let me tell you sure. my Billy Sheehan story. Oh, yeah, do. Yeah. So, a um, uh, friend of mine who works in the background um, and does some moving and shaking here and there and back channeling um, uh, got me, uh, got, well, uh, got me Billy Sheehan as a guest. Right. Oh, right. His yeah. email address. Cool, great, lovely. Yeah. Says, ping him an email, ping him an email. Hey, Billy. Um, thanks for agreeing to do the podcast. Um, let me, you know, let me know where you're based. Yeah. Time zones, etc. What times and days work for you? And um, we'll, we'll we'll set it up. Hmm. Thanks again, Howard. Send the email. I got a reply back almost straight away. Um, hey man, yeah, sounds great. Just tell me where. Tell me when, Billy. I was like, okay. So I sent another email. I didn't want to be pushy, so I, I kind of left it a day and yeah. sent a reply to that saying, okay, well, I need to know what city you're in for the time zone and tell me times and days and I'll, I'll work around you. Nothing. So after a week, I emailed him and I said, um, I forwarded my last email. I said, hey, Billy, you know, as below, um, let me know what works for you. And uh, he emails me back and he says, Hey man, yeah, sounds cool. Great, just tell me where. Tell me when. <laughs> Billy. <laughs> so I email him back. We're doing it at four in the morning. So I email him back and I say, Well, I need to know. City time. Blah, 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 blah. He doesn't reply. I email him again and say, 
City time, he emails me back and goes, yeah, no problem, man, just tell me where, tell me when, Billy. And I'm like, oh, fuck. So I just email back and I go, right, fine, Tuesday, two o'clock. <laughs> Here's the number. I've got your Skype, you're right, right, done, right. And he, and he re replies, he goes, cool, man, see you then. I'm like, yay. Um, never turned up. Oh, never turned up. Didn't happen. Two o'clock, my time. So nothing, nothing happened, nothing happened, nothing happened. Okay, fine. Never mind. Um, the following day, at five o'clock, as I am um, stood in my kitchen cooking, my phone starts ringing. Billy Sheehan. <laughs> I'm just like absolutely out of the fucking blue like let's do it what, right what, now. so I, was it? So, so I looked at him and I was like do you know what Billy I'm fucking cooking right now <laughs> <laughs> so anyway I hit him back through Skype with a message saying um, hey look you know this might be the way to go yeah just like you know do it when you feel it. I mean, I, you know, I'm just, I'm, yeah, it's like, yeah, a day and eight hours late. Um, what do you say? And he never replied to that message, and I've oh. I kind of left it there, really. Oh, because oh, I just shit. thought, yeah, well, no, I'm, it was, it was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah it was. Sometimes, it, it, sometimes people say they'll like people. Well, actually, sometimes, a lot of times, people say, yeah, yeah, I'll come on the show. Yeah, great. So you go, okay, when. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, let me check my diary and I'll get back to you. Okay. Well, he's in Nashville, Tennessee, if it helps. Right, okay, fine. I'll track that motherfucker down. Yeah. yeah, no problem. I mean, he's, he's definitely worth talking to. The guy has got a lot of stories. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah, I don't doubt it. But I don't know. I don't... I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But um, anyway, slight, um, slight fucking deviation there. Do, 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 do apologise. Um... So um, you're you're home at the moment. Yeah. Um, are you back out anytime soon? Or you know what you what's what's um, what are you doing these days? I've got um, as I say, I'm a backline tech. I'm working on some eighties pop shows. I've got Newport with ABC. Fuck me! Week. Yeah, you still doing that? Yeah, that circuit. Doing the eighties pop but, stuff. But that's but I mean. Right. And, and you know, stop, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, before you start weighing in with your moral judgments, <laughs> yeah, fucking pays, man. The fact that they're still making a living and able to pay crew after thirty years after having a few hits. Oh no, but what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying is for you, well, you know, the, yeah. what you're doing. I mean, it's that's like it's not, it's, it's, it pays it's, them and it trickles down to yeah, to absolutely. Me. And it's, the it's thing awesome, is, yeah. as well, is that. You know, you see this all the time. In fact, we might be going over old ground. We might have said this before, but, um, you know, someone plays more than six UK shows and everyone goes on about what a great old school kind of UK tour it is. Yeah. And then you look at the guys that you're working with. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they're, and, and they're still doing the kind of tours that we did in the 80s. Yeah. They're still doing the 37-day tour of the say, UK. Tony Hadley's just done a 30, 40-day UK tour. Fuck me. Um, putting his all into it every night. I fair play. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I've got a bit of that coming up. And then in August, I've got Eric Martin, the singer from Mr. Big. He's oh, coming over to the UK for some shows. Dude, dude, so, dude. He's coming over yeah, for yeah. some shows. Let's and, get him and a podcast and yes. yeah there you yeah. go so everyone heard it right there yeah verbal, so, verbal contract I think you'll find yeah so I'll be playing a little bit, <laughs> bit of bass for him every now and then Ooh, that's lovely. always good fun yeah um, I've also I've got another of these maiden fan club events coming up there's a thing called Beast Feast in, <laughs> sorry in Finland I know I know but <laughs> oh no no we've sorry got, sorry I laughed got straight face with no, maiden no, no. fans I, no no but I laughed and then you said Finland yeah, yeah. And I was like, ah, oh, right, okay. But you know what? If it was in the UK, it would also be called Beast Feast. Absolutely, so, yeah. This is know. the thing. We're, we're Let's leave off we, the we have to, <laughs> Sorry, um, Finland. We have, to, we have to withhold our sense of humour for a bit and go, okay, yeah, that's perfectly reasonable to, yeah. to put a, an Egyptian mummy on your album cover. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, no problem. Yeah. That's your problem. Absolutely. Well, Beast Feast. You know, beast you're either, feast, you're, yeah. you're, it's either a Beast Feasting or you're going to feast on the Beast. Either way, you know. <laughs> Hopefully everyone, it's, it's a win-win, the way I see it. Yeah. yeah. Beast Feast, Beast Feast. Dennis Stratton's going to be there. Oh, well, um, wow. So, you know, me and him are going to get up and jam with the local covers band and things like that. Now, that'll be something. 
yeah, yeah. for them to talk well, about. Maybe there's another person for your, your podcast. Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, I'm in with all the all your podcast people. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that, that's what I've got coming up at the moment. Which is all good fun, you know. That, yeah, no, that's, that's great. A bit of actual work, some playing, yeah, some chatting to maiden fans. Um, yeah, and this is this is a good life, you know. Yeah, absolutely, life. absolutely, and you know. Again, it comes back to that. It comes back to being self-employed, I think, which is um, absolutely, which is a big yeah. thing, or as I like to call it, you know, self-employed. Is is uh, Eddie Izzard? Have you ever heard the Eddie the Eddie Izzard where he does that whole thing about uh, cool and looking like a dickhead? And it's like right. cool and looking like a dickhead are very close together. Yeah. The weird thing is that they're in a circle, so you can go all the way around like that. <laughs> right? So you can be cool, and then you, you and you can get less cool, less cool, less cool, less cool, less cool, and looking like a dickhead. Looking like a dickhead. Oh. Or you can go from cool to dicker. Oh, you said shortcut. Like, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so you can get less cool, or you can just go jump straight to dicker. <laughs> um, and that is a is is something that he was he, he was always banging on about it, mm. like about like that that cool looking like a dickhead thing. But the whole thing is, you say it's like that cool looking like a dick. Yeah, self-employed. And then there's a very fine line between self-employed, unemployable, self-employed, unemployable. Yeah. Self-employed, unemployable. You know, I, I, and, you know, I, I absolutely get that. Some people you can't know. deal with that. Um, my first few years of being self-employed, you probably know it, you pay your tax bill in January, you've got nothing booked for the year ahead, and you're absolutely shitting yourself that you can't pay the rent in February. And yet somehow something comes up, hopefully, and that's the way it's been for me. And my whole time being self-employed has been bits of playing, bits of teching, now bits of writing, bits of do you need someone to help out next week doing something. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of self-employed. You can Well I, I, the, the thing is the thing is it's like human beings never happy you know the philosopher Chris Rock makes a great point you know when he said you know there's like yeah, there's there's two two human beings in this world married and bored single and lonely ain't no one happy anywhere you know and it and, and it is it's that great thing it's that great thing of um, yeah I've done you know I've done a regular job and it sucks you know, the, the man working for the man and fucking 95 rat race bull fucking shit yeah I'm gonna become self-employed work for myself and just be anxious all the time well, that's and have I don't no it. yeah it's, it's, it's like yeah you years. don't you know you don't have that routine but also you don't have any kind of guaranteed income right change the subject yeah um we were just you know we, we took a pause there folks um just to discuss <laughs> discuss discuss re real world things um You've got, like, you know, Eric coming over and that. And I, I know what you mean by that kind of... I, I think we have sort of fairly sort of similar kind of lifestyles where it's like things can come in. It's like, you know, gigs can come and go all the time for me with comedy. You know, I'm, well, I'm, I'm in Loughborough this weekend. You know, I was uh, Preston a couple of weekends ago. Um, Stoke the weekend before that Sheffield the weekend before that you know and, it, and it's like uh, it, you what it's like when you have a life that is not like anybody else's that you know yeah you know what I mean it, it's 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 a little bit um, I don't know not isolating but it can it can be yeah in a way yeah because you, know, you don't have a lot in common with people around you in this area like it's not many people yeah. go to the co-op Maybe at the same time as shopping hours as I do. Yeah, we're mm, mm. But, you know, we all make our choices in life. And, and I would advise anyone out there, if you're stuck in a job that you're not enjoying, really do find a way out. You don't have to be a stand-up comedian or a musician or an yeah. author. There are plenty of ways to be making a living. And just bits and pieces, you know. I was over at a mate's place recently and he just said to me, um, he just moved into a new flat and he said, he cleaned up most of the flat, he said, the kitchen's absolutely filthy, I'm not going to bother with it. I'm just going to get some Polish girl in to do it off for 60 quid. <laughs> Fair enough. And I was like, um, Jean Dobre? Ah, right. <laughs> do, do I have to be actually Polish or can I just clean the kitchen? I'm self-employed, I can do what I want. 
Yeah. Uh, of course I'll pop around a mate's place for 60 quid. Um, this is actually, yeah, maybe it is an advert. If someone out there wants a kitchen cleaner, 60 quid, I can clean the kitchen. Why not? <laughs> but I, I know what you mean, though. I know what you mean. There's well, like, it, it, it's like, because you, you have, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. I mean... Um, and that's it. Become a cleaner rather than get an office job. Yeah. I knew a friend who was working at an estate agent's, and she had to call cleaners up and get them to clean flats up. And she would employ them for 20 quid an hour. And she wasn't getting 20 quid an hour in the yeah. office. And she ended up going, you know what, I'll become a cleaner. Because <laughs> I get more than I get paid as a state agent, which isn't what you'd expect. But this is the benefits of self-employment, you know? Yeah. And yeah. then you can all charge all your sponges and dishcloths as tax deductible. Yeah, oh, no, no, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Look, I've, I've, I, I remember when... Um, I'm not sure if I've said this on the podcast before. But um, the the inland revenue came for me. Oh yeah. Um, full on investigation. Right. Rang me up. Number withheld. I answered it. Probably just as well. You don't want a voicemail from the fucking inland yeah. revenue. HMRC. So um, uh, you know, seeing you've got a seeing you've got a band mm-hmm. uh, and albums, and um, and to be fair, this was pre acid rain getting back together and I was like well the last time I had a royalty check for that was in the 90s so good luck yeah and she says yes but you've also got this uh, you're also a director of this company I was like yeah you're a director of this company yeah and you know you've got this income here yeah what are you going to well we want to know where, where all the money you know, where's the money coming from you know you're you're doing uh, you're doing comedy you're doing, you know, musician, where, where's all the money? <laughs> you know, where's all our tax? Yeah, of course, yeah. And um, I did what any, you know, I did what any normal um, person who is completely innocent would do. Shat themselves. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. assumed that they'd done something wrong. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't sleep. Um, and, um, and then <laughs> a friend... A friend of mine said, well, you do know, like, well, I'm self-employed and my accountant is, you know, Ray. And I was like, yeah. He's like, well, he's an accountant. I was like, oh, oh yeah, he is, isn't he? <laughs> oh! It's dull. So I rang Ray and Ray was like, oh, yeah, come on. Let us out. And he said, because the last, the, the end of the conversation I had, they said, well, we can go back three years, but we'll just go back one year and then take it from there. All right. And he was like, oh, right, okay, well, fine. He said, well, send me three years because I want to I wanna have all of that. And I was like, okay. So he comes back to me and says, right, done a year and um, uh, we're going to submit it. And, let's, uh, and basically, the way I'm looking at it, the way I calculate it, they owe you about two grand. Right, yeah. I was yeah, like, it's quite what? Obvious. And he was like, yeah, they, they owe you about two grand. I was like, really? He was like, yeah. So we put the books in, and uh, and I spoke to her, and she was like, ah, oh, right, okay, well, yeah. And she was like, well, hang on, I just want to see. Um, I'm looking. You did, you did, um, you did a show in Leeds. It's like, yeah. And you live in London, yeah. And you didn't get a fee for it, no. So you went from London to Leeds and then back again. All that mileage did a free show. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. I said, well, firstly, haven't you noticed that there's no accommodation? Because I stayed at my mum's. Right. So I drove up there, stayed at my mum's. So I haven't tried to ac- uh, claim for accommodation, but I had accommodation. Yeah. So I could do it overnight. Yeah. And that free show was for a club. I have 17 clubs across the country. This is the and when they book you for a weekend, yeah. that's for Friday and a Saturday. And that Friday and Saturday is going to pay you about a grand. So right. with all those shows, all those... We- and and she was like oh and, and she she was trying to stop me because my point was beating over the head with every single word and and it was like and she was like oh right okay yeah no, no, I, I I get it I understand See, I was like, what, and she said d- 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 hang on hang on, hang on. this is the best bit right she says um, well we won't be going back any further right and I say well I've spoken with my accountant we'd like to go and. To- we we'd like to go back all three years if that's okay with you, and she was and she just went, yep, fine. <laughs> Seven grand in the end. Seven grand that the tax office paid me back. Brilliant. 
Plus, it's worth getting a check then. The thing is, I like most people listening to this. Like when I, you know, when I was doing comedy and all the rest of it, it was like, oh, you know, it's cash only. Keep your head down. Don't worry about it. And what you don't realise is that it's like actually. No, no, not keep your head down, cash. No, because if you if you if you declare the money you're getting paid, you can claim all of the shit you're paying out for anyway, and get a break. Because obviously, we know mentioned Izzy, Eddie Izzard earlier. He is paying decent tax, one would hope, on his earnings as a comedian. Mm. However, there's also people like you on the on the, the system, and as well as you know, there's people like me as our bass player. We're not making a fortune. Absolutely, we're making a, a living. We're getting by. Yeah. We can afford a pint in the pub. It's all all right. But what I was going to say is what some people aren't, aren't understanding, and I've had this with people. Is like, you know, I did Total Rock DJing on Total Rock for ten years, and I didn't get paid a penny. I wrote for Metal Talk for several years, and didn't get paid a penny. Some people didn't understand why I'm doing this. What they didn't understand is that actually through doing Total Rock, I joined yeah. Tank and I joined yeah. Monument. Yeah. And through writing for Metal Talk, I wrote Screen for Me Sarajevo, which became a film which was very successful. Yeah, absolutely. If it wasn't yeah. for doing these promo things, and even like coming out, you know, obviously we're mates and we just having a chat. Uh, no, no, no cash changing hands as I understand it you know? well, except over the fucking bar over and the even bar, then it's contact they're making the money and I yeah. didn't even get a receipt but this is um, you know this is promo yeah yeah absolutely and, it all helps absolutely. Build up. and it's not like doing this interview is going to sell me a million copies of the book you know but maybe someone will get curious and, and you know, absolutely yeah. Matters, yeah. but the, the thing is they that might come to an Eric Martin gig or they yeah. might buy the book or yeah. they might just send me a rude email well, I, I have the, I have the same I have the same outlook when it when it's when it's doing comedy, which is I'm as far as I'm concerned, every gig I do is two gigs. I'm playing the gig. Yeah. Uh, sorry, three gigs technically. I'm playing the gig, so that's one gig. Yeah. I'm playing it to get rebooked there. Yeah. That's the second gig. And then the third gig is the person in the audience who wants to book a comedian for something. Yeah, or yeah. or is or is a comedy promoter and go and, and because promoters watching. do exactly you never know who's in the audience you never know who's watching. And I did two I did two shows in Preston, sparsely populated in a, in a room that holds about could easily hold six to seven hundred. No, no, fuck that. Actually, I've just gone mad. They easily hold like two to three hundred. Mm. I had like 50 down the front that's it yeah. comedy night room's too big long story but anyway um, um, but there were great shows and they were lovely yeah. and go to comedy shows people um, but I came off stage and I mean you know I'm doing these shows I'm driving to Yorkshire from London then I'm driving across from uh, my mum's house to Preston and back again. So that's 60 miles each way. So I'm doing 100. I'm doing 240 miles in just Yorkshire to Preston. Then I'm doing a further 480 miles London, Yorkshire and back. So it's all of that. Yeah, yeah. And and also and also not massive fees. Not massive fees by any stretch of the imagination. But I come off stage that night. Uh, I come both nights actually. The first night, um, that was brilliant. We loved you. We're getting married in the summer. Will you play our wedding? Do you do weddings? And I was like, yes, but honestly, it, it will be expensive. And they're like, fine, fine. And uh, and then uh, well, also because not just because weddings are expensive, but also because they're a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, and I said I'd never do one again, but they were really nice. And you won't be picking and up many future books. Uh, uh, so you're not. That, the there, there's that. Well, gig. there's that one exactly. Yeah. But and also at the moment, if it wasn't for COVID, I would have said no. I don't play weddings. Right. But you know, these yeah. must when the devil shits in your kettle. Yeah. And um and the second night. Um, local rugby club loved it come, would you come and play the rugby club yeah absolutely no problem you know it, and it, you know you're right exactly exactly so, I've, I've, so I've, that's, that's two fees and two that's two, but that's two fees secured yeah a rebooking secured so that because both shows went well so that's two more 
shows mm. then there's two more shows from people in the audience and that's you know that's that's how you that's how you got that's how we got to roll isn't it you know we've, we've got to make the most of absolutely every single angle every say, single night I knew a guy many years ago who played a gig at the Brentford Red Lion yeah, now, now I'm McDonald's I remember it well great little gig yeah but yeah tiny pub gig and you wouldn't care less about it right no it's, but it was but it was cool it then I knew a mate he played drums with a band there he didn't know that someone in the audience was something to do with UFO he got asked to join UFO from playing a gig at the Brentford Red Lion <laughs> there you go he joined UFO he quit a week later telling me they're all a bunch of useless drunks but the fact <laughs> is that he joined UFO from playing a pub gig so my yeah. advice to people is if you're playing a tiny pub gig just treat it like it's, it's Madison Square Gardens or whatever because it has to be because yeah. you never know someone from UFO's in the audience or someone re- booking for a wedding <laughs> or, some, or, or, or some other drunk yeah or <laughs> could be anyone you know yeah, yeah. And, and you know it's, it's yeah no but it is it's, it's, it holds true don't play a moody gig but also also this this the, I'm reminded of one of the many footballers autobiographies I've read mm. which is Stuart Pearce and Stuart Pearce was always like you know Pierce was fierce about playing for England and he always he always in his in his autobiography he's talking about like the, the his mindset all through his career but especially with England was you're playing you, 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 you're playing for two two caps you're playing you, you're playing because you're getting capped for this game and then you've got to play well enough to make sure you get your next one yeah yeah that's what it's yeah. about it's like it's it, you 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 have a good game to make sure you get a chance to have another game but that's when you get to the level of England but I'm sure earlier on in the book he talks about playing with his local school team but actually doing quite well and making an effort and someone spotted him no because he was no? one of the no he was one of these people who was like he was old school he was full time employed right and it's like and playing and playing like non-league and we stuff like that yeah and he came right. up came up the hard way right but, um, but still, but it's some, a bit, someone spotted him. But it's know? it's the do... same. But it, but the thing is, it is that it's that same like focus of look, just be just deliver on the night. Just focus yeah. on what it is you're doing, and everything else will take care of itself. Mm. You know, it's always. So I've always said, you know, just make sure look after today, tomorrow will take care of itself. Um, and clearly, that's why I have never created a band like Ghost. <laughs> 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 oh dear me oh dear hey marketed as the exorcist sounds like fucking Scooby Doo it's a funny one yeah it's marketing it makes me laugh and it's it's worked for them <laughs> well it, look yeah I don't it's, really know it's Tobias F- it's, to, it's Tobias Forge it's one man um, you know yeah. 70s tribute good you know fair play mate well done yeah he got a little niche because I think there's not there's not many bands breaking through these days. Not to that extent. Is, yeah. You know, Ozzy Osbourne's called it days. Has he or we know or what? I mean, or is oh, he having another is operation? This the last and can like, ACDC take it round again? Can Kiss take it round? Again? We're we're going to run out of festival headliners. Temple bands, and that's where Ghost are going to come in. Yeah, well, it's going to be bands like Ghost. It's going to be bands like Mastodon. Yeah, um, you know bands like that who step in. Once upon a time, I'd have put Machine Head in that in that uh, potential yeah. category, yeah, possibly, but yeah. just one too many patchy albums. Um, yeah. But yeah, there is. But we're going to need you know, bands, aren't we? You know. And, uh, well, either that, or you're just going to be looking at festivals that are uh, just a lot less also, something you'd want to go to. We're, we're now the old generation, aren't we? So we're looking at the young yeah. bands going, oh, yeah. they're rubbish, aren't they? As people would have looked at Metallica and gone, oh, it's just a noise, yeah. my God. Back in my day, Led Zeppelin had tunes, you know, tunes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, I just, they're just stupid. Look at that, it's ridiculous. Well, occasionally, you do catch one of your friends <laughs> saying something like, oh, but, you know... It's just noise, or you know, like, yeah, and, yeah. and and you, and you do you you have to hold your hand up and go, whoa, this is your dad. Do talking, not yeah. go there. Mm. Don't become that person. Don't yeah. become so closed off to any any element of culture where you go, no, that's just fucking rubbish. Yeah. Because that's what people do to metal all yeah, the fucking it? time. Yeah. Don't ever do that. And that's why we were the underdogs, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. But it's like, if there's some music out there that you cannot stand and you can't understand why anyone likes it that is popular, just suck it up. That's it. Because you just described metal for most people. Yeah. You know? Absolutely. You know, we're, we're outlanders, outliers, you know? Yeah. And it's um, and this whole. Where are you on this absolute bullshit about? Oh, you know, rock's dead. You know, metals. I mean, it, it, it seems to me. It seems to me that we go. We we go about eight years. Mm. Before some gun <laughs> says that, <laughs> well, and that, and this, and the, yeah. a couple of years ago. Didn't oh, you? sorry. So, and in that case, it wasn't some gun. It was the cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, exactly. And it's like, and you know, it's it's really weird as well because I think I think I think you split heavy metal right and heavy metal's fans generally into two schools and you may not know what school that you fit into especially if you're listening to this but I know one, one I, which one I fit into right and there's the school of Gene Simmons which is exactly that Rocky said well, whatever right? yeah. and then there's the school of the leader of the fight the leader of the opposition there can only be one leader yeah. of the pack and that's obviously Dee Schneider Okay, yeah. Right. And who is the only per you know, he's, he's the only person who takes the bait from Gene and, and takes him on in public. And that's because D to this to like all throughout his career has always said, Chris, Kiss, not a metal band. Stop it. He's yeah. never fallen for it. He's never drunk the Kool-Aid like no. most. And he's always said, Come on, they recorded a disco album. Fuck those guys. Yeah. It's a marketing organisation, always has been, always will be. Also, you've, um, got, you've got to consider with Dee Snyder that, you know, he was working on that New York club scene for all those years that yeah. Kiss were on it. Oh, yeah. So, you know, Dee Snyder, Twisted Sister got big in the early 80s, but he'd been working on it for years. So for him, there's got to be an element of like, I was playing that club when Kiss were playing, and Kiss went big 10 years before me. There's got to be a little bit of... Um, no, do, do you know what? I, but I also think I really, I, I, he's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says what he thinks. You beat me to it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, dude's a legend. I mean, Christ. Yeah. One of the only reasons I, I'm doing yeah. the, the motorcast is I want to interview the bastard. Yeah, I've, I've, tr I've, I've tried out. I mean, I'm honestly, I, I tried through his PA. I came up with a, I came up with a really unique angle for podcast interview. And um, so this is a pass. That was like, and that was like about that was pre pre pandemic, I think. Um, and I, I just, I really, really want to interview because I just think it'd be a really good laugh. And I like to his boots. I think he had. He's, he's just. Um, it's what's the word I'm looking for? Um, integrity. Mm. In ten, and yeah that's right in case any of you are listening to this and laughing thinking in, it, like imagining in your mind's eye the singer of Twisted Sister in all his get up and his makeup and all the rest of it oh, no. yeah that's right I said integrity no, they it's are, about more than that they are scary for big guys in makeup they are actually scary I, I love that but, but, but also I love that you I love watch Kiss I love Kiss and yeah. it's an entertainment show and you're not actually scared by them and Dee Snyder yeah I am actually scared. Well, I, I, what I, what I love to that, that is th th this story about, like, you know, when Lemmy introduces them at, uh, at Reading because people yeah. are throwing shit at everybody, and he's saying like, just fucking, these are my mates, give them, give them a fucking chance, yeah. and they go out there, and he goes out there, fucking dressed, full makeup, the whole lot. <laughs> And, and offers the whole fucking crowd out because some people <laughs> threw some shit yeah. and just says just make a fucking make an orderly line <laughs> and when this show is finished I will come straight there I won't go to the dressing room I won't get a shower I will come straight there and I will take you on one at a time one to one. Yeah, that's what I mean. He's actually scary. Yeah, yeah no, but, no, but the thing is, I love that because yeah. that is literally, he just called, a, it's like, you're going to throw shit at me, like, you know, in, in you know, with, with your anonymity, just an arm in a crowd. Yeah, and it's like, no, no, I am, I'm going to make it personal. I am going to make it. I will fucking offer you all out. You just have to queue up. 
and and the great thing about that story is like there was yeah, yeah at the end of the show there's no fucking queue is there there's That's no one there cool. except there's people who want autographs I've got a similar story in the book actually Going back to that, we we're in Copenhagen, dude. Beautifully done, by the way. You honestly, yeah, hey, no, that's lovely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that, that was beautiful. No, well, actually, uh... it literally is so similar. <laughs> we were in Copenhagen doing a gig with Bruce, and some guy in the audience threw what was actually a plastic beer cup at our guitarist. Right, it's completely harmless, and it bounced off the guitar, and that was that. Um. Bruce went backstage, he got uh, a sparkling bottle of two litre water, shook it up so it worked hard, walked back on stage, saw the bloke who'd thrown this glass, and he launches his two litre bottle at the guy. Absolutely bowled him over, completely decked the bloke, yeah. stopped the song, and he goes, right, you, you can don't ever fucking throw shit at my band, or I'll take you outside, and I'll kick the fucking shit out of you. Fucking hell! Right? Like and then the atmosphere of the gig kind of dropped a little yeah. bit. Everyone's like, fuck you yeah, know, what's going off here? And we carried on playing some songs, it was all kind of cool, got a bit more rocking again. Then we came off for the encore. Yeah. And we're backstage with Bruce. It's a little bit over the top, mate, you know, it's just a plastic. And he went, oh shit, was it? I thought he threw a fucking glass at you. I thought he could have fucking killed you. And like, no, no, it was just a plastic. And he went, oh shit, I guess I probably owe that guy an apology. So we went out to do the encores, and he went, he goes, right, where, where's that bloke I had an argument with earlier? Oh, yeah, you there, right. He goes, I'm really sorry about that. I thought that was a glass. It turns out it was just a plastic. Basically, still don't throw shit at my band, but I'm sorry, I shouldn't have, you know. Yeah. He goes, but if you still want to go for a kicking in the car park, I'm up for it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> and that just broke the ice oh, like these Oh, beautifully so done. everyone's just fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fucking awesome. And I must say, after that show, <laughs> Bruce went out in the audience and was just chatting to people. And hanging out with the, with the audience, which is a lovely thing that we could do on those Bruce Dickinson gigs because they're quite small, you know. Yeah. Do that at the O2. Yeah. And it was half of me thinking, has he gone out there to go and find the bloke? Yeah. <laughs> He's still up for it, really. Like. But I think, you know, you just front it out and just be a normal person, bring it down to the level. But, but do you know what? Do you know what? That, that is. Um, the, the mark of somebody who understands and that is the exact right thing to do again in an interview and I did with a comic element and yeah no 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 it's, it's like it's, it's called releasing the tension in the room yeah yeah in comedy yeah. that's what we would call it right yeah you know you reset the room yeah by, and what you do if you're dying you reset the room by going oh fuck me this isn't going very well is it and everyone laughs and the reason everyone laughs is because everybody wants to laugh it's a comedy club and you've been shit so far yeah yeah so if you yeah. say you've been shit it gives them a chance to laugh and let them free of their anxiety and also reset and go well if he knows it wasn't going very well that means he knows when it goes well so this could be all right yeah yeah he's well and it's yeah, yeah so yeah. It, it's one of those and it literally it's like like that you can turn a room straight around that's funny um but it's exactly exactly the right way to play it because yeah. the thing is that what could have happened and we know the kind of people who are out there we've worked with them um, it was just a plastic was it? yeah couldn't have thrown it anyway yeah, oh, you could have and, that. yeah, yeah, yeah that shit yeah because that shit is the one where you go look no, you're doubling down on stupid now. Yeah, don't yeah, do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do that. If you're in a band with them, if you're in a band with them, if you if you know them, if you you know you're you're on the periphery, anything like that, it's like no, not the way to play it. No. You have new information. React to it. Exactly. Yeah. And you know, we're none of us too big to say sorry or oops, I made a mistake. It does happen. Well, yeah. some of us are, aren't they? Some people <laughs> yeah. do seem to be too big to do that. But, you know, but Bruce wasn't. And, uh, no, no, not at all. That's, that, that is yeah. exactly, exactly how I handle yeah. a situation like that, isn't it? And that's, that's, this book is just full of more stupid shit. <laughs> hey, well done! Beautiful! 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 Seamless! Fucking seamless! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck <it up>. Oh dear. <laughs> You're pausing there. Yes. <laughs> so yes, we we have unpaused the recording. Um, well, that's a stupid thing to say, isn't it? Because 
they yeah. must know that we've unpaused it. Yeah, because yeah, like, if it was still on pause, yeah, we'd we'll be getting this. Wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, Glad we clarified. Yeah, 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 absolutely, absolutely. Oh, I was just a yeah, needless clarification <laughs> on my part. Um, feeling somehow responsible, you know, as the, as the uh, inverted commas host. You are the host. I am indeed. It's all yeah. Your fault. Anything I say now is yeah. responsibility. It will be taken down and used against you, son. <laughs> you get the libel case as well as me. For That's it. So you use used against you in a court of social media <laughs> the, uh, the the most vindictive well, of well, all courts all judged, yes yeah. wow. yes lest ye Pick shall be the comments yeah. on this one. judge not lest ye shall be judged well that's looking a bit pre-social media isn't it that, that, that quote <laughs> <laughs> these guys didn't know Facebook was coming did they <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so any more films in the works <laughs> uh, no more films on the go I've got but, a few uh, more books on the way well, yeah yeah, well, I'm interested because you, you've you've got you've got a movie out of your out, out, out of that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, what about what about the atom seed? Is there any? Do you think there's? No, did, I, I don't know if you heard our singer died last year. Oh God, no, yeah. I didn't. No, it was really tragic. Actually. Oh yeah. mate, so we both we both lost somebody we were in a band with last yeah, year, yeah. and it is fucking it is, weird because you've shared a hotel room with them and you've shared your lives with them for years. You shared moments nobody else just. Absolutely. No, you cannot understand yeah. or describe unless Some you've done it. Some kind of bond that you yes. know, yeah. shared for years. Yeah. yeah, that was that was really tragic. Oh man, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, That's it terrible. was a horrible one. Obviously, went to the funeral and stuff, and, oh. and it was weird as well because it was the first time I'd been out since the lockdown. It was still during sort of oh. semi lockdown. Fucking hell! The first time in a pub with people, and of course at a funeral. It's a wake. You don't end up wearing a mask all day, and you end up. Hugging his widow, obviously, and this is strictly oh, speaking mate. breaking the two meter rule. That, oh, well, it, ter- well, it, it turns out you should have just had it at number 10, it would have been all absolutely. in, absolutely. And then bring all our mates, to yeah, the ball. yeah absolutely. Why, not? why not? Disgraceful, but that's but yeah, that, that was that's, horrible, yeah, that's heartbreaking. But, um, but you know, yeah, that was, um, uh, but, uh, you know, how did he die? Is it, uh, it's not, I really don't want to go into it, it's really okay, probably pretty, pretty horrible, um, sure. not, not fun. I mean, it's never fun, anyway. especially yeah. not fun. Um, but yeah, and um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the end of the atmosphere, really. Obviously, we finished in about maybe two or something, but it was amazing the number of people still remembering us, and uh, yeah, and that was a weird thing as well because obviously, when he goes, when he went, he was unaware of that there was all this outpouring of love for him, you know, and on uh, social media, but also like classic rock did a little piece on him, and I think he, yeah. he wouldn't have expected that after all these years, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, absolutely tragic. But yeah, that's the end of the atmosphere thing. Um, the Bruce thing, you know. Yeah, one of the things about writing the book was like, yeah, drawing a line under it. That's all the stories out there. It's not like there's going to be a volume two with some right, yeah, focus photos and some stories that aren't very funny. Yeah, it's like no, no, I put it all in there, which is partly why it's so big, which is partly why it's a bit expensive. But it's the a bit expensive. Thing. How much is it? It's 30 quid. Fucking hell, a bit expensive. You rip off cunt. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But how much do these beers cost us, you know? It'd take you two yeah, years. Yeah, isn't to, it? To it, but it, but it? But it is exactly that. You're yeah. exactly right. Yeah, it's yeah. like, you know, you, you say 30 quid for a book. Um, and really? You say, well, what is that, that's like... That's barely around. In London, certainly yeah. in London, yeah, that is, yeah. that's barely around the drink. So you want to not realise that you're being self-employed and nipping up to Leeds is, of course, you're getting a cheap pint, and that really <laughs> shouldn't be taxed. That's all right. Well, <laughs> you know, but no, um, I do keep all of my beer receipts. But yeah, the, the book is 375 pages full colour, like I say, photos and tickets and stuff on every page almost. And I just, yeah, I want to put everything in there. So there's not going to be oh, yeah. another book on that topic. No, no, no. But I, 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 to be honest, I was surprised. It's a, it, 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 it's a, it's a coffee table book. It's a yeah. tome, yeah, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not yeah. just some exactly. little thing. And you saw I'd the, imagine the hardback would be. I was going to say you saw the softback. The hardback's slightly bigger and thicker, obviously. And yeah. and you could do some some real damage with that, I reckon. <laughs> <sighs> oh, I do. I was reading it. That is, that's, that is a weird, that, that's a fucking weird sense of pride <laughs> to have in your book, isn't it? It's like, <laughs> wow, I, I take back what I said, author. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've written a book. <laughs> fucking, if someone gets that around their head. If you're walking home from the pub tonight, someone's trying to mug me, and I've got the hard back on me. This is a hard time. I tell you what, mate, you've got, you, as it is, you've got the, um, you've got the, the, 
the paperback with you. Well, that's a fucking stab vest right there. It's going to hurt. There's no, that's no, a stab no, vest. Yeah. No one's getting through. <laughs> no one's getting through that. You know, not unless it's a fucking butcher. So my advice to everyone out there is buy one for the front and back. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, and a roll of gaffer tape. You want to do, you, 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 you want to do that in your impen, impending zombie apocalypse <laughs> offer? But you know, yeah. on Amazon was it when it said the customers also bought roll of black gaffer tape. Yeah, yeah, roll, roll of black gaffer tape. Um, yeah. And a uh, instruction manual on how to build an underground um, shelter. <laughs> yeah. Apocalypse. <laughs> Take this book with you. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But also, I think uh, one thing I think I like about it is, you know, it's, um, we, we don't go into like personal lives and yes, shit like that, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. We're not digging dirt here because, after all, as you can see from my face, I had a lot of fun in that band. Yeah, and so that's what it's about. It's but, about uh, fun but, but I, it's the, the, yeah, but the thing is, right, mate, it's not bitching about anything in the past. But for, no gripes. Well, look from the from the little I've read of the book, um, and yeah, at least I made the effort. But um, <laughs> but um, unlike I, what I what I would what I would genuinely say, and, and I'd say this if we were friends or if we weren't, you know, and you were just the author of the book and I didn't know you, I would say that most rock books rock books metal books whatever okay um for a start they're not a history of the band it'll be an autobiography so yeah so you get a whole chunk of bullshit about and and this goes for everyone yeah. if you read an autobiography if, if slash when i do an autobiography right i am not going to do stuff about when i was five at school yeah thanks fucking there it is there it is and literally your book starts with had a lot of fun here it is yeah <laughs> and it's like it's, it's the stuff that it, it's the stuff where you go oh what's Anthony Keyes' autobiography and you go well he's not talking about spit roasting a girl with his dad <laughs> uh, yeah, he, 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 or, or other weirdness like there's some cool stuff in there yeah, yeah. you've got to wade through a lot of shit but there, there is literally no wading it's literally, no, no, it's it's literally like yeah yeah you go, you, go, you go from paddling to diving yeah yeah, yeah. And there's no avoiding the facts you know they're in there and, yeah and, yeah. Maiden fans will learn something new about Bruce or about Maiden or about the band that we were. Well, were certainly about with. those years of his life. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It gives you a bit of an insight into him, which I don't think you get in like, the official biogs because they're all a bit too tame for my liking. I say there's no slagging off going on, but this is, this is the truth. This is what we're going on. And one of the things I did was I kept a diary through the whole period. So I checked through my diary. So I've got everything pretty much chronologically, day by day. I've got every recording session, every rehearsal wow well, the whole right. lot charted out and when I'm out with a pint uh, I'm out with Bruce for a pint before I came out with the book and I told him the idea of it and he was like yeah great go for it sounds good yeah and I told him about this thing of having diaries and I've got listed every rehearsal and recorded and he's like what well, because I don't have any of that stuff you know he wrote his, his autobiography in a pub yeah. it's an entertaining read and all that yeah. but it doesn't do the in-depth you know and that's one of the things I could do because it's 375 pages on essentially two years yeah. whereas most rock course biographies they're covering 40-50 years of their life yeah. condensing it to 200 pages and wasting the first 20 of those saying I went to school and my mum was quite nice yeah and this is the area and this is what my dad did yeah. and this is where we go and this is where we went on holiday and, oh, so whatever Whatever. Um, you know you, you know that band that you're in that you got famous in? Yeah, can you just start from Absolutely. when you joined the band? <laughs> yeah, please. Any chance of that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and believe you and me, if you, I've read, uh, well, read, I've listened to, and, and I normally read books, but I, I was gifted the, auto, the audio book of Rob Halford's um, oh, autobiography. Oh, that's I want to read. And, and, and I was very much like, can we just get... Right. Can we just get to being a priest, please? Yeah, I this will skip the priest. whole growing up shit is boring mm. me, even if it is just about playing with cocks. Right, you know. I know. With or without cocks. Childhood, we all had a childhood. You know? We all had a childhood. And like you said, with or without. I mean, I had a cock in yeah. childhood. Yeah, I'm you know, Still. So the same one. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, no, I only, I, I it, it, bomb <laughs> that would come down to talking about our penises. 
<laughs> Absolutely. It's not going to get better. Well, it's, well, if people have listened this far, they've listened to a couple of talking penises this long. Yeah. Well now yeah, they're not listening to us talking about penises. <laughs> it's got to make a change. Um, Chris, we'll, we've got to do this more often, mate. I hope so. We say it every time. But yeah. Yes, let's. Absolutely. Cool. <laughs> Absolute pleasure. For me too, my friend. <laughs> And there you go. That was our chat. I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Um, we had a right laugh, as I'm sure you can tell. Um, and uh, yeah, that book is called Inside the Skunk Works Machine, Bruce Dickinson's Most Mysterious Musical Project. Um, quite a weighty tome it is indeed. Um, the, having flicked through it, it's just, yeah, straight out brilliant. Great idea. Really well executed. Um, and I will put a link in the description so you can go and get your copy if you wish so uh, that is it ladies and gentlemen thank you very much thank you very much for listening thank you for being here thank you for being a bollocker because that's what you get called when you listen to this podcast you're a bollocker okay so you are also part of the um talking bollocks army so please do spread the word as much as you can regarding this here podcast uh, either good or bad, you know, tell people to listen and say it's, it's shit, give it a listen. He's an absolute wanker. Yep, fine. I, I'll take any listeners I can get, to be honest with you. There's so much to compete for these days, isn't there? So it just remains for me to, uh, once again, thank you for listening. Really do appreciate it. Uh, more pos- podcasts coming your way, more old bollocks, more movie bollocks, all coming down the same old podcast feed that's right if you subscribe you get the talking bollocks podcast you get the movie bollocks podcast and you also get the old bollocks podcast Hmm? not bad so that's all it takes just subscribe and it's done tell other people to do it take their phones off them get the podcast app out and subscribe them your very self if you do that, please do let me know and I will give you a personal thank you because I do think that's pretty cool. Or, of course, wait till someone's out of the room, pick up their device and subscribe them anyway. <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll take that. Put it on automatic download as well. They all count. Thank you very much. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Never a chore. Catch you soon. Take care. Travel safe. Walk briskly. Run smartly. Amble pleasantly. Stroll resolutely, march purposefully, and however else you want to get about, but wherever you are and whatever you're doing, take care. Catch you next time.